Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I know I'm gonna fuck up. So again. Uh, <laughs> another episode of Trash Talk. I'm Damian Hill. With me as always is TJ O'Connor. Tonight we are joined. We are joined by Dylan Smorello, who is getting ready for his first MMA fight, who is currently sitting at a 5-1 and one Muay Thai record. But before we get into all that, Trash Talk is brought to you again by our sponsors, the Hall of Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo out of New Brighton, Minnesota, Origin Wellness CBD, The Striking Institute, Spartan Martial Arts, James Clark Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Fighters, and TJ's Mom. How are you doing tonight, Dylan? Doing pretty good, man. How about you guys? Can't complain, man. I mean, yeah, I'm I, I'm doing good. Like I said, can't complain. I know you're probably feeling a little bit excited having your first official MMA fight and also being able to compete right now while all this bullshit is going on. Yeah, man, I feel so lucky. I mean, my only complaint is that I'm not fighting this weekend. I mean, that's the only thing I can, <laughs> I can complain about is that the fight isn't fucking tomorrow, you know, because... I was supposed to fight May, and then they were like, ah, shit, it's happening. You know, maybe we can see what happens in June. And then, like, a couple days later, they were like, all right, bro, you might not be able to fight for a damn minute. And I was like, fuck, man. So, yeah, man, I'm super grateful. Not very many guys can fight right now. So, yeah, only thing I can complain about is it's not happening sooner. Man, well, that's actually a good thing to complain about, with, given all of the circumstances. The only thing you can complain about is that it's not happening soon enough. But I think that's just a testament to how much you're willing to fight and how much you love fighting, you know. And getting into that, we spoke a little bit off camera about how you're five and one in Muay Thai. But when you first started training, you were looking to get directly into MMA. You weren't planning on doing Muay Thai at all, were you? No, because I so to kind of give you a perspective of why I thought that um, I came off of a. Uh, I ran for a year um, at a division one on a division one track scholarship um, oh. and then I went to shit pretty quick um, and I came back after my freshman year and I think because that was that was 2017 to 2018 but the first actual MMA fight or UFC fight I saw on pay-per-view was Cody Garbrandt versus uh, Dominic Cruz and I remember being like Damn, look at those motherfuckers. Like, I, you know, I just the way I, I'd never really seen a full UFC fight. So that's where my interest got peaked. And then as I was winding down with track, I didn't I didn't run track second semester. And there was a heavy bag. There was a heavy bag at the gym. And uh, I you could you couldn't buy you couldn't wear the boxing gloves unless you were part of like the boxing club. Um, shit. But I, I could I got the wraps. And I remember just I remember going in and hitting the bag. And I was just like all right, well, fuck, maybe when I get back, I can, like, find a gym if there's in Minneapolis. You know, like, I knew that little where I was like, oh, maybe there's, like, one, two gyms and, you know, MMA gyms in Minneapolis, you know. And then I get back. I lived with my parents maybe for another month. And then I moved in the northeast Minneapolis uh, from Mound. And one of my buddies was that was going to the Marines was like, hey, man, uh, there's an MMA gym right in our hometown. And I was like, no, the fuck there isn't. Like, what are you talking about? And, uh... And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, damn, I've been driving past that place, like, multiple times a day for, like, two years. Um, and then I came in there, and so, yeah, my mindset was, like, MMA, MMA, MMA. I hadn't even seen a Muay Thai fight. And I didn't really think that anyone did kickboxing anymore either. I thought it was all MMA. And so, yeah, I came in there thinking, like, you know, in a month, two months, I'll, I'll have an MMA fight. And... Then he was just like, listen, bro, I hate to break your heart, but you, you, you got to you gotta learn how to throw some hands first. Like, I know you've been in some scraps. I know, you, you know, a high school wrestler, you know, you're obviously very athletic, but like, you, you got to learn how to kick motherfuckers, too. You can't just use your hands and take people down. So I was like, all right, fair enough. And then in October, yeah, October of 2018, I had my first Muay Thai fight. And he's like, we'll just we'll do this for a year or two and then we'll and we'll start getting into MMA. So and that's how we ended up here. Dude, six fights in two years. I mean, that's pretty good. You're staying right on track, you know? I mean, and it, it's kind of crazy because uh, I can relate to what you were saying a little bit. Like, I had a, that's how I originally found my gym that I train at is I was driving past it 
for like a year or what I want to say like six or seven months before I ever realized that it was there. And it was a buddy of mine who said, dude, there's an MMA gym up the street from your house. What the fuck are you talking about? Because I had just bought a heavy bag, bought all these puzzle mats and all this stuff. Dude, that's amazing. I'm glad that it all worked out for you. But uh, I mean, granted that you wanted you thought that you were going to get a fight after or MMA fight after one or two months of training. After you started training, how did the realization of, uh, I guess, I don't know how hard it's going to be and all that stuff. Did that start to set in a little bit? And were you happy that your coach made you take the Muay Thai fights before you make your MMA debut? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm a pretty humble person, you know, especially going into a division one sport and knowing yeah. how much work that took. I knew that it was going to take a lot of work to, you know, especially to transition into something like MMA. You can't go from running around a track to suddenly jumping in a cage and, you know, doing pretty good. And I just was like, it was, it was just funny. Cause I, when I started training, I was like, damn, like there are some serious levels to this because here's this 44 year old dude with cystic fibrosis, just kicking my ass all over the mats, <laughs> you know? And then there's this dude that, you know, there's guys here that have been that are in their thirties, forties that have only been doing this for six months and look at what they're doing to me, you know? And, you know, I'm, I'm a humble person. I'm a controlled person. I wasn't, you know, throwing bombs or trying to kill anybody in the gym, you know, but at the same time, I'm trying really, really hard to learn. I'm just getting my ass kicked. And so then I was like, yeah, I need some time. Definitely need a couple months of training before I just jump in there. Yeah. So I guess, uh, hindsight, are you happy that you did the Muay Thai fights before? And now do you feel more developed and ready for this, uh, MMA debut? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't even imagine like trying to think about how I fought in my first fight versus how I fight now is just <laughs> like unimaginable. I mean, I probably missed a hundred right hands, like a hundred huge overhand rights in my first fight. Whereas now it's like, I use so much more footwork. I'm so, I'm so much taller. You know, I just feel everything just flows. You feel smooth. It, it's just like track. It feels like my sport. You know, it feels like what I'm meant to do versus when your first fight, I'm like, all right, man, I know how to street fight. I know how to fight. I know how to throw hands. But as far as any technicality, that shit's out the window right now. So we got to <laughs> we gotta hit this shit hard because I was just, I realized really quickly, I was like, okay, you actually have so much more to develop outside of just athleticism than, than you thought going in. And so, yeah, that was a really, really humbling moment for sure. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry. That mindset. What? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, 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 I was just saying sorry because I know you had something to ask specifically about the fight, and I keep, I just keep jumping in in front of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So now I completely forgot what I was going to say, but a kind of a rough idea of it is taking that mindset that you know gets you to a Division One, you know, athletic scholarship, competing at that level, and transferring it over. Have, have you feel like that's been a benefit? Knowing, well, you know, like you said, it's not the same thing. I'm not going on track and running, but you know, breaking down your day. I have to wake up. I have to do this, 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 and, and making it a methodical thing. And you feel like that's encompassed it more leading up to this debut? Yes. And I didn't realize that until I stopped. Mm -hmm. when, when I stopped running track going into that second semester, it just broke me. It broke me because, and not because I loved track that much. It was because only when I stopped did I realize mentally how much it was important to my life to train multiple times a day. Like there was physically, there was obviously something that I needed to, there was some sort of energy that I obviously needed to work out of me consistently for me to be healthy, um, for me to be my best me. And yeah, I mean, it, def it definitely paid dividends because when I stopped and then I finally had something to do again, something to focus on again, I realized like, holy shit, you know, this is, this is gonna turn my life around. You know? but it's going to turn it around because now I have something to dedicate this time to again. I have something that gives me an identity again because when you train that much and you train that hard, especially when you train alone a lot, you know, because I was already training alone quite a bit. You know, I was training obviously with the team when I got to college, but, you know, even when we were doing two-a-days, I was still going to the weight room. I was still going back on the track. You know, I was still doing an hour of, you know, foam rolling, an hour of, you know, sitting on a lacrosse ball, doing stuff like that to, you know, doing stuff to push myself even further, you know, to get ahead of the, to get ahead of the curve a little bit. And so having that again, 
and realizing how important that was not only to me, but like how much that actually benefits your performance compared to someone else who's not doing that, that you're competing against. It, yeah, it for sure paid dividends. And especially in this sport where you don't always have the, you don't always have a hundred training partners. You know what I mean? You don't always have someone to roll with. Um, you might go, you might show up to class and there's no one there because people got kids, people's got jobs, you know, this dude's got this, this girl's got that, you know? So if you show up there and you just say, well, no one else is here, I'm going to leave, you know, that's the wrong mindset. You might as well start getting, you might as well start hitting the bag or hitting that road, doing something, you know, doing something to get better. And so that definitely has paid dividends because we're a pretty small gym. Um, I, I mean, in my opinion, I got one of the best coaches in the world. Um, but you know, he can only do so much. He can't be there three, four times a day. He's got kids, he's got a wife, he's got things he's got to do, you know? So yeah, definitely pays dividends having that mindset of going into a division one sport and then going into MMA where you've got to dedicate so much time to so many different aspects. Dude, I, I fucking love what you said because I've tried to explain this to people that I've worked with and, uh, I guess coach, I, I don't consider myself a coach, but I help out where I can and I'll take the time with somebody who I feel is dedicated, but they don't understand. There's always something that you can do. Dan Gable is one of those guys because I grew up as a wrestler. I've heard about and everybody talks about all the time as he's traveling from one class to the next, he's running there. And if he stopped at a stoplight, he'll stop and do jumping jacks. He'll stop and do up downs. He'll stop and do uh, calf raises and squats and stuff. There's every moment is something you can train. So no one necessarily has to be there for you to get the work in. If they're there, great, you can take advantage of it. But if they're not, you can take advantage of what God gave you ability. Take advantage of that. And I'm glad to see that you're doing that. And I guess to get more specifically into the fight, what do you know about your opponent? And what would you have to say to him? Because he, he might be able to find your record on in kickboxing online. But you've been training for MMA in this debut the whole time you've been training and uh, fighting in Muay Thai. What can he expect from your jiu-jitsu game, and what do you know about him, and what do you expect? I don't really know a lot about him. You know, there's no video on him. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that's got a, you know, he's got a Facebook and an Instagram full of, you know, pictures of him hitting pads, hitting the bag really hard. You know, and I'm not, you know, that's no disrespect, but that's just not me. Um, you know, he's a big dude. He's definitely a bigger 155 than I am just because I'm more of a natural 145 guy. But yeah, I mean, all I really know about him is that he's had some kickboxing fights. Um, I think he won his last MMA fight by TKO. You know, I don't know how, I don't know if it was on the feet. I don't know if he put somebody on the ground. Um, but it sounds like he's got some 10th planet, you know, and if you're a big, strong dude like that, you know, I don't think you know, I don't think you're falling to your back very much. I think you're slamming people on the ground. I think you're getting on top. I think you're ground and pound, and I think you're maintaining position. You know what I mean? Because those guys are either really rubbery on their back or they're putting a lot of pressure on you on top and you're not getting them off you. So I don't got any video on the guy. I don't know a lot about him. Um, but it's exciting because, you know, when I – you know, it's funny because the people around you, the people in your life that aren't experienced with this sport, man, they see a picture of this, you know, tall, jack dude with a beard – you know, and it's like got tats on him. You know, he's clearly bigger than you. Everyone's like, man, like, aren't you scared? And I'm sitting there like, dude, I'm excited as fuck. Yeah. This dude yeah. is big. This dude is strong. This is a bad motherfucker. Like, that's who I want to get in the cage with. Like, if this, you know, if I get knocked the fuck out, that's just, it's part of it. You know, obviously that's easier for me to accept because I'm in the sport. A lot easier for me to accept than my family to accept or my friends or my girlfriend or all that shit. But for me, it's like, hey, man, you know, something happens. I get my ass whooped for three rounds. I'm not going to be sitting there bumming after. I'm going to be sitting there going, man, I got so much I can go home and work on. You know what I mean? And so it's exciting for me because I, to me, he just looks like a big, strong, tough dude that definitely is technical, definitely is experienced and just, you know, wants to bring it. And that's super exciting to me. And for me, what I would say to him that, you know, that you can expect that you're not going to see on my record is that I'm going to pressure you. You know, I'm going to be in your face the whole time. You know, I, you know, Muay Thai is obviously a little bit more the nest it's a little bit more a little bit more back and forth you hit me i hit you i throw a combo you throw a combo obviously it's a lot more complex than that but when you break it down it's just not nearly as chaotic as mma you know what i mean but for me that's 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 where i thrive i thrive in that chaos i thrive in the mix you know i'm not just in there throwing in the pocket 
taking one to give one. I got good defense. I got good head movement. But, yeah, man, I'm going to be there the whole time. I'm going to be moving fast. I'm a sprinter, you know what I mean? And I'm a long-distance sprinter. So that means I'm going to be sprinting the whole time. And as far as my jiu-jitsu, listen, man, we don't belt. I've never worn a gi in my life. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've never rolled with more than two or three people in my life. Um, but I do it all the time. You know, I've been doing it, you know, multiple times a day, four to five times a week for, you know, two or three years now. I'm no slouch on the ground. It's not where I want to be, but I'm comfortable there, you know? And so, yeah, man, I mean, I'm, again, I'm not like some jujitsu phenom, but at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable on the ground. I'm comfortable with someone that's, that's amazing on the ground. If he's got a black belt in jujitsu, he's got a black belt in jujitsu. But it's like they say, everyone's got a black belt until they're getting punched in the face. So <laughs> really, let's get chaotic. So yeah, man, I would just, I mean, that's why I'm getting so excited when I think about this fight is because I don't, I don't think he's the kind of guy that's sitting there going, man, I'm going to beat the fuck out of this dude. You know what I mean? It's going to be an easy fight. I think he's sitting there going, coach, give me a tough dude. And I think the promotion's sitting there going, damn, we got two really, really young two big 155ers that got, you know, experience. It's not just going to be these two dudes throwing down in the street fight. It's it's going to be a really technical, really violent fight. And, yeah, man, I, I'm getting jacked up just fucking talking about it. <laughs> I, love, I love your mindset, just the, the way you talk about it. You speak you speak like a veteran. You speak like there's many years behind you, and that's like that's a really good mindset to have. You, you're young, very athletic. You know, you mentioned, you know, the track background obviously cardio is a thing you're very familiar with so expect a high pace but if you had to narrow it down just to yourself what's the one thing you'd say you have to bring with you to this fight on september 28th to make sure you get your hand raised and start your MMA career undefeated timing timing all day you know what i mean i'm not sitting there if you look at my knockouts so my second fight i got a 29 second knockout and you know we're we're, we're joking and joshing and then Oh, you got you to gotta get a faster knockout next time. And yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm going to get a faster knockout than 29 seconds. Third fight comes, I knock the dude out in 13 seconds, you know. And every time, though, I'm not cocking that right hand back and launching it. I'm not just clobbering a dude, you know, up against the ropes until he drops. It's, it's just, you know, bump, set, and then that strike goes right down the pipe or right on the chin. And it lands perfectly, and you can and you can see it. It's obvious both times. I'm not throwing as hard as I can. I mean, I'm throwing like 70, 80 percent because that's the one that's not even really supposed to land. That's just the one that's supposed to get me inside. Because every fucking dude I fought at the beginning of my career was like six two. I had to fight trees every time, dude. I'm five nine. I was when I first came out for my first fight, and I saw how tall that dude was. I was like, the fuck, man. You told me this was guy. I was like five ten. You told me he's a little taller. This dude's tall as fuck changes the game plan like a motherfucker. But every time it was just, you know, they were going into the punch and it was either going to be a body shot or it was going to be a different kind of punch. And then I turned it over into a hook or into a straight and then bam, it landed right where it needed to. And then um, especially my last fight in November up in Alexandria, actually um, I had an expedition against, that's why you can only find four and one, but I had an expedition against, uh, I don't know if you, I can't remember his last name, but his name is BJ. He's from McCoons. Um, I know, obviously, you guys know McCoons. Um, and uh -huh. BJ, BJ is 41. You know, he's been fighting for, you know, however long. Um, really good dude. Really cool guy. Um, it was super funny because, you know, I was a late replacement. And uh, he was supposed to have his first pro fight. And then they were like, listen, man, you both lost your guys' opponents. Do you want to do a you know, a hard exhibition? <laughs> and yeah. Uh, fuck yeah, you know? And it was funny because he was looking at uh, my sheet and he's like, wait a minute, that's, that says 1999. That says 1999. How old is this kid? <laughs> and my coach is like, he's 21. He goes, Jesus, I'm twice this dude's age. And then he was kind of like, are you sure? Like, are you sure that dude wants to fight? Whatever. And we ended up having a really good fight. But every time I landed a shot against him and he's a seasoned vet, it was never me throwing as hard as I can. It was me setting something up. It was me waiting to see how he reacted, waiting to see how he reacted all right, now launch a counter or now, you know, throw this right because this is the way he reacted, you know. So I'm not going to beat this again. He's bigger. He's stronger. You know, I'm not going to be able to whale this guy to sleep. You know, I'm going to have to have really good timing, really crisp defense, really crisp striking. Um, and everything I do basically has to be perfect. So, I mean, I think that's where I have the advantage going in is 
I know I have to be perfect. I know I have to have great timing. And I know that I already have success with that. And then I've got the power and speed behind it, you know. So I'd say that's definitely my strength, my advantage going in. Well, I love it because just speaking as a guy who started knocking guys out and was known for it and stuff, it's every time I got the knockout, I wasn't going for the knockout. But every time I started to go for it, I almost never fucking got it. I mean, it it's so fucking stupid but yes you're on the right path and <laughs> and i love what you just said and i guess uh before we start to wrap this up we love to give uh i guess you just one final statement to the fans and to the uh to the people watching to your opponent even what they can expect from you why they should tune in and watch and also a chance for you to shout out your sponsors and anyone at the at the gym or outside the gym that's been there for you yeah man as far as a statement, um, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here right now to be the best. You know, I'm not here right now to be the fastest. I'm not here right now to be the strongest. My mindset has always been to be the most violent. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be the dude that is trying to take your head off the, in the most technical way. You know what I mean? You know, every time I get a hold of you, I'm trying to snap your ribs. Every time I kick you, I'm trying to break your femur. Every time I punch you in the face, I'm trying to break something. You know, I'm not wasting any energy just trying to touch you unless it's meant to set something up that's going to drill you, you know. And so the reason why you want to tune in is, like I said, I have no idea when this fight's going to end. I might talk all this shit. I might say all this, and I get knocked out in 10 seconds. Shit happens. It's a fucking fight. Um, but I, I, I'm in this sport because I genuinely love fighting. I, I'm not in this sport because I have, you know, this you know, this aggro personality. I like hurting people. No, I like to fight. I like to throw hands. I like to compete. You know, I like to go against somebody that wants to throw hands or wants to compete with me. And so, you know, you want to tune in because I, I just cannot see this fight actually being quick. I mean, I just see this fight just being just a drag out war, you know, and it's hard to say that at the amateurs. It's really hard to say that at the amateurs because it's really hard to know how good each guy is and how they're going to match up. And some guys choke. Some guys freeze, you know, it's, it's hard to know because some guys, you know, they just, they can't handle that intensity. They can't handle the speed. Um, if you're in my situation, you know, you've been training your ass off for three years after, you know, fucking up a scholarship, you know, so for, you know, there's, there could be all sorts of reasons to have pressure, but man, I'm going to go out there smiling. I'm going to go out there having fun. And so that's why you want to tune in because I'm going to have fun fighting and you're going to see two dudes fight really, really hard. Um, and yeah, I got to give a shout out to my gym, uh, three satiric life, MMA, uh, it's not on the map right now just because there hasn't been a lot of guys coming out of it. I'm pretty sure this is the first person you guys have ever interviewed or ever talked to from that gym um, in the past couple of years. And so got to give a shout out to my gym. You know, it's 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 a community. You know, all, all those people have really built me up and not only into a fighter or a mixed martial artist, but in, into a young man. And I'm really grateful to everyone there. So shout out to all the members there. Shout out to my coach, Merrick Moreland. Dude's just a savage. I mean, that's the only thing I know how to say. Like I said, the dude's got cystic fibrosis, and he does everything a doctor tells him he cannot do. Um, and for him to be at that age and with that illness, to be <laughs> throwing hands with dudes like me in the gym, to be going to McCoon's and sparring with them when I go over there to spar, I mean, it, dude's a savage. So shout out to him because I definitely wouldn't be here without him. Uh, Doser Vita Supplements. Um, his wife, Christy, uh, Christy Hughes, um, she's a neuropathic doctor, and she's building a brand, a supplement brand for amateur MMA fighters. Um, it's not just pre-workout and BCAs, all that bullshit. No, man, it's it's stuff for your brain. You know, it's stuff to reduce brain inflammation after a fight. It's stuff to make sure you're the most cognitive person you can be before a fight while you're training. Um, it's you know, it's muscle repair. It's it's the best supplements in the world right now. Um, and even real quickly, I hit on something that we're doing. We're doing this thing called genomics. Um, they literally will, you know, get a swab, get a blood sample. Um, they send it into the lab. We get it back, and it breaks down all your gene markers, and it tells you what kind of athlete you are. It's like, listen, man, you know, you're an endurance athlete. That's who you should be. So you're already got this. So you should probably be hitting some cardio. You should probably be hitting some um, some hypertrophy. You should be trying to grow. You should be trying to do this. Um, it'll even tell you, you know, what's your uh, susceptibility to brain damage. So it's like, listen, man. Obviously, you're fighting. You're going to get hit, but. You should not be the guy that's throwing in the fucking pocket. You should be the guy that's getting in and out, really solid defense, good head movement. Um, I mean, and then it breaks down, uh, you know, the nutrients you should be having, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's fucking nuts. So 
shout out to them because that's definitely made me a better fighter and uh, a healthier fighter. So, and then, yeah, man, shout out to you guys. Shit, the Midwest, you guys have been going, you guys have been interviewing everyone from everywhere and that gives us the platform, you know what I mean? That gives us the platform to grow and um, show people our personality. I mean, there, there's no video of me out there, you know, there's, you can barely find my record. You know, you can barely find the name of my gym, you know what I mean? So, you, you know, shout out to you guys too for giving everyone this opportunity. Well, dude, we're nothing without the fighters. We're, dude, we're, we're completely nothing without the fighters. This is all we do. And if you guys didn't do the show, we wouldn't have a show. So I, I got to throw that right back at you and thank you for doing the show with us. And yeah, man, I'm excited. I can't wait to see the video. I'm just, I'm ashamed that I'm not going to be there in person to see this fight. And oh man, you sold me on it. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, TJ, you want to send us off? Definitely. Uh, Dylan, best of skill to you in this fight. I look forward to seeing the result, like Damian said. I mean, it, it's been a long time coming. They've been kind of pulling the slingshot back, and now you get to let loose and go fight. So I'm excited to see it. Uh, like this video. Subscribe to Trash Talk with Damian and TJ. Do not, I repeat, do not be out.